Christian Bible states that in the beginning there was only God, and then God said, let there be light, and bang, there it was. Everything from nothing. So should it be any surprise that the first person to propose the Big Bang Theory was actually a Catholic priest? Georges Adamatra was a Belgian priest who was a professor of astrophysics at the University of Leuven, and in 1927 he published a paper where he theorized that the universe expanded from what he called the primeval atom, or the cosmic egg. Many of his theories are attributed to Edwin Hubble because Hubble published a paper two years later that mathematically proved a lot of the concepts that Lamatra had published in his paper, so he wound up getting all the credit. Because maths are hard, y'all. Today, the Big Bang Theory is the undisputed king of theories regarding the origin of the universe. There's just no other theory out there that explains so much of what we see in the cosmos. And it's a top-rated TV show that is, uh, supposedly funny. At least that's what the laugh track keeps telling me. <laughs> but even though it's so widely accepted by the scientific community, there's still a lot of mysteries around the Big Bang that we haven't been able to solve, which has led a lot of people to consider that maybe there's another solution out there. Austin Murray asked, can you do a video on the issues surrounding the Big Bang Theory? And if it were proven untrue, what alternative theories could take its place? Okay, before we get into the problems of the Big Bang Theory, let's do a little Big Bang Theory 101. The theory was popularized by Edwin Hubble in the 1920s as a way to explain the expansion of the universe, saying that if you ran time backwards, it would eventually collapse into a single point. And judging by the size of the observable universe and the speed at which it's expanding, that comes out to about 13.7 billion years. Now, scientists don't know exactly what happened at the very instant at the beginning of the Big Bang or what came before it, but they do understand what happened down to 10 to the negative 43 seconds. That's this long. This is also the amount of time I've actually spent laughing at the TV show The Big Bang Theory. <laughs> at that point, everything in the universe is compressed down into an infinitely small space. It's infinitely hot and infinitely dense. All the forces of the universe and time itself completely break down. In the first second after the Big Bang, the universe went through five distinct epochs and expanded from the size of an atom to 100,000 light years. In that time, the four forces of the universe untangled themselves, which leads to the creation of exotic matters, particles like W and Z bosons, which lead to quarks and then protons and neutrons in the first atoms, all in the first second. This mind-boggling expansion created the cosmic microwave background radiation, or the CMB, which can be seen today. It's a uniform glow that emanates from every single corner of the universe, and in fact, if you turn your TV to static, 1% of the static on there is the CMB. You're looking at the Big Bang. The Big Bang Theory is an elegant solution that perfectly explains the expansion of the universe and the creation of all the forces in the atoms that govern the universe. But much like the TV show named after it, the Big Bang Theory works until it doesn't. <laughs> there are a few fundamental issues with the Big Bang Theory that have yet to be resolved. Here's five of them. Issue number one, what the hell? This is the obvious question. So there was nothing and then there was everything. So where did it all come from? Why did it expand in the first place? Science still has no idea. Issue number two, missing magnetic monopoles. In the first epoch of the Big Bang, known as the Grand Unification Epoch, all the forces of the universe were combined into one unified force at like trillions of degrees. When our supercomputers simulate these conditions, they predict the creation of a particle called ma magnetic monopoles. They're massive particles that really should be found all throughout the universe, but we've never found one. If our understanding of the beginning of the universe is correct, then these things should be everywhere, and they're not. So that's a pretty big mystery. Issue number three, the flatness problem. Space-time in our current universe is extremely flat. It just has a very slight curve to it. But in a universe that expanded from a single point, this is theoretically impossible. The universe would have to be either completely flat or massively curved because any deviation in curvature in the initial conditions as the universe expanded would cause it to expand in its curvature as well. But it apparently didn't. For example, if you pointed two lasers in the same direction with just a half a degree difference in angle, after five feet you probably wouldn't notice the difference at all. But after, say, five light years, they'd be millions of miles apart. It's that difference in initial conditions that can make a big difference down the road, and somehow in 13.7 billion years of expansion, our universe didn't do that. Issue number four, the horizon problem. The temperature of the CMB, the leftover radiation from the Big Bang, is almost perfectly the same no matter what direction you're looking at it. So the CMB temperature here 
is the same as here, even though they're nearly 30 billion light years away. For something to be that uniform and smooth would require it to be able to communicate with each other. For example, if you place a hot cup of coffee on a table, the heat of the coffee would warm the table and vice versa until both were the same temperature. That's communication. But different sides of the universe are too far away for light from one side to have ever reached the other side, so energy has no way to transfer between the two, which makes communication between the two impossible. One side of the universe is like, talk to the hand. <laughs> And problem number five, the clumpiness issue. As I just said, the CMB is extremely smooth and even, but the rest of the universe is fairly clumpy. At the greatest scale, our universe is made up of clumps and filaments of galaxy clusters, leaving giant voids of nothingness like it's a giant sponge, or as many have pointed out, very similar to the cellular structure of the brain. In order to explain how such a uniform expansion could create the clumpy, brainy universe we see today, scientists have had to turn to our old friend, dark matter. Only dark matter can really explain why the universe clumped together the way it did. But of course, we still have no proof of dark matter. So that's kind of a problem. Now, Big Bang proponents, i.e. the vast majority of scientists, believe that these questions will be resolved with enough study over time. And you know what? I believe them. But there is another theory that's gained a little bit of steam over the last couple of decades that aims to solve some of these problems. It's called ekparotic theory. First introduced in 2001 by Paul Steinhardt and Neil Turok, the ekparotic theory is an attempt to merge relativity, which explains the nature of the universe today, with string theory, which better explains the universe at the beginning. String theory is a mathematical model of the universe in which there are 11 dimensions, the four that we experience in our daily lives, and seven higher dimensions that are curled up into tiny strings that shape reality at the smallest level. And these strings are part of larger structures called membranes, or brains for short, that exist in 4D space. The ekparotic theory states that there are several brains out there in these higher dimensions, and from time to time these brains can smash into each other. And when they do, they create a gigantic burst of energy very similar to the Big Bang. It's a cyclic theory that states that instead of the universe just coming out of nowhere and then fading into oblivion, it's something that happens over and over again in trillion year cycles as these brains are attracted and repelled from each other. And the really interesting thing is they could actually test for this. Many believe that there should be a gravitational wave out there in the universe that was caused by the Big Bang, and they even think they know the properties of what this gravitational wave would look like. Of course, we just recently figured out how to find gravitational waves from neutron stars colliding with each other, but the scientists at these gravitational wave observatories now have the Big Bang in their sights. Proponents of the ekparotic theory have a mathematical model of what the gravitational wave would look like if it was caused by two brains colliding, so when we find this massive wave from the beginning of the universe, we'll be able to test and see which one of these theories wins out. It's pretty exciting. Then the only mystery left will be why that TV show is so popular. <laughs> I really hate that show. So there was another thing that I ran across in my research for this that I found really interesting, but it didn't really fit in the video anywhere, so I think I'm just gonna leave it here for you. There's a great article I found, I'll link it down below. It's about this German physicist who is very highly respected for his work on solar wind, who has an interesting theory regarding the CMD. He says that he doesn't think it comes from the Big Bang at all, that it's actually the product of a sort of vacuum plasma that fills the vacuum of space. It's a plasma that's formed by the constant flow of high energy particles popping in and out of existence in quantum states. He thinks that this plasma could interact with uh, photons from all the stars in the universe that would cause it to look as if there's a CMB way out at the edge of the universe, but it's actually emanating from space itself. A really interesting idea, and there's a lot more in the article, so I'll link it down below. Definitely go check it out. So one last really quick thing. Um, a lot of this, honestly, is way over my head, so I gave a very high level view of all this, and there's a lot of stuff that I probably could do an entire video on itself, but uh, for the sake of just cramming it into one video, I just gave you a very rudimentary version of it. So if any of you out there actually study this and I got something wrong, please let me know in the comments. I might do a video later that you know corrects some of these things because seriously, a lot of this is just really dense, complex stuff. And for the sake of time, I didn't get into the criticisms and the rebuttals of some of these ideas and some of these problems. There are a lot of those in the links below. Definitely another reason to read all those articles. I, I put a lot of them down there so you guys can do some more research on your own. But, um, you know, the people who study this say that the Big Bang is the answer, and I am inclined to believe them. Uh, but you don't hear a whole lot about the problems with the Big Bang, so I wanted to do a video about that because I found it really interesting. Anyway, fascinating stuff. Thanks for watching. Share and comment. Support on Patreon, and I'll see you next week. Love you guys. Take care.